Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Call upon his name and make known his deeds among the people. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity to gather together in his name. And he promised if two or three would gather. How many of you know he's here this morning? At this time, we are privileged by our God to have an opportunity to behave as he behaves. My Bible teaches me that God is a giver. Those who have already given in the foyer, we want to thank you so much for your benevolent offerings. Those of you who desire to join us in that effort to worship via our social media platforms can do so at the Givelify app found at the greatermountcalvary.org website. You can also bring those gifts by across the week, Monday through Friday, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Someone will be here on the campus to receive those gifts, or you can send them the old-fashioned way via the United States Postal Service. With gifts in mind and in hand, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank Thee for this hour of worship and this precious, powerful privilege of giving. You promised that if we would give, that men will also give into our bosom good measure, pressed down, shaken, and overflowing. Receive it now according to thy word and thy will, and may it go for the purpose intended for the upbuilding of thy kingdom here on earth and the relief of the poor. For it is in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Those of you who are gathered with us here in the sanctuary, we invite you to turn your attention to our video monitors for our morning announcements brought to us by our own Deaconess Janice Taylor Ellis. Good morning, and welcome to the Gospel Choir's annual anniversary celebration. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Johnny Cameron Sr., thank you for joining us today. These are our announcements. If you are visiting with us this morning, in person or via live stream, it is our prayer that you will receive a tremendous blessing from our service. Please know that you are always welcome to worship with the Greater Mount Calvary Church family. The GMC Toy Drive Committee would like to extend a special thank you to those of you who were instrumental in making our toy drive a success. Your gift of love will bring joy into a child's life who would have gone without a Christmas gift. Again, thank you for sharing your love and resources. For the health and safety of everyone in attendance, we must continue to adhere to the safety protocols. At the end of worship service, please allow the ushers to direct you on when to exit your pew. This is our attention. Each year, we take this opportunity to reflect on the Gospel Choir's humble beginnings from the Senior Choir of the 1950s under Mrs. Whitfield on Lynch and Poindexter Streets to the establishment of the Young Adult Choir by our own First Lady, Sister Lenora Cameron. The choir's name was later changed from the Young Adult Choir to the Radio Choir, and later the name was changed again to the Gospel Choir. We also honor the roles that each director, musician, and vocalist have played in ensuring the longevity of success that the choir now enjoys. With the consistent support of our pastor, Reverend Johnny Cameron Sr., the Gospel Choir has performed with Vicki Winans, Billy Rivers and the Angelic Voices, the Mississippi Mass Choir, and the Mississippi Symphony Orchestra. has also recorded an album and performed for the Jubilee Jam, the Governor's Inauguration, and the grand opening of the Jackson Convention Center. The group has received both local Choir of the Year 
and Local Musician of the Year Awards by the Jackson Music Awards Incorporated. The complete history of the choir can be found on our website at www.greatermountcavalry.com. And now, please help me to welcome our Master of Ceremony, the one and only Mr. Arthur Kane. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Being here one more time is a good thing. So I was sitting there just kind of thinking about the last time that I was here at Great Mount Calvary for the choir anniversary. I didn't have Gray, and you didn't have these fancy monitors and this video technology, right? You did not. God is a good God and worthy to be praised. Pastor Cameron, it is so good to see you, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. It's so good to be here. It's so good to celebrate uh, this gospel choir. Let's get them into the sanctuary now. Everybody, stand to your feet. Put your heads together and receive Miss Latoya Knight Hubbard and the gospel choir sharing, He Rescued Me.
don't know about y'all, but I needed to be rescued. Amen, amen. The Gospel Choir's theme for today's celebration is a thankful praise. And here to reference that theme and song is the Mississippi Mass Choir's international recording artist and my friend, Miss Barbara Harper, performing a Mass Choir favorite, Lord, We Thank You. Let's welcome Barbara Harper.
have so many things to be thankful for. Lord, we thank you. Amazing grace. How sweet the sun. Father, we come now, we bow down here as we come with our hearts. We come, Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you, Father, for all your many blessings. Thank you, Father, for this day, a day in which we can come together in song and in praise. Thanking you, Father, for the choir in which you have placed here at this church. That we can lead us in songs of praise unto your holy name. We pray, Father, for Pastor Yarbert. This morning, Father, who's going to come and to break the bread of life to us telling us what thus says the Lord. We thank you, Father, for his presence. We thank you, Father, for each and every one that is here this morning. We thank you, Father, for those that are sick, that are on our shut-in list, those, Father, who's in the hospitals, those who are shut-in at home, who have a desire to be here with us this morning, but, Father, are not able to be here. Father, now as we come, we pray now that you would just let your Holy Spirit continue to dwell within this place, dwell within our hearts, that as we are assembled here this day, we be able to sing praises unto your holy name. We pray now, Father, and ask that you continue to be with us, continue to guide us, continue to walk with us, keep us in your care. For these blessings now we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our guest is a longtime resident here in the city of Jackson. He's made quite the impact on this community. He's a former coach, principal. He's the husband. Father for amazing children. He's also a graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi and Jackson State University. He has served as a chaplain at the VA Medical Center. 
He's a former mayor of this beautiful city of Jackson. It's preaching time. As the choir comes, the next voice that you will hear is that of the pastor, founding pastor of the relevant empowerment church here in the city of Jackson. Amen. Amen. We present to some and introduce to others our friend and our brother, Pastor Tony T. Yarber. Let me see if I can do it like He also knows karate. <laughs> you know, and just before we receive the word, we all salute my dear friend, Sister Barbara Harper again. I love you with all of my heart. Absolutely amazing. You know, it is time for the word, and I don't want to be the one to stand in between you and receiving all that God has to give. I do have a question for you this morning. Who's on the Lord's side this morning? Who's on the Lord's side this morning? Just shout hallelujah one time if you're on the Lord's side. Let's bring the choir back with their version of the all-time favorite by Reverend Timothy Wright featuring Brother Orlando Johnson. Who's on the Lord's side?
your mouth and say, I'm on the side. Oh, you can do better. I said clap your glad hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I serve a real good God. Yeah. Glory to God. Ain't, ain't, ain't no need in going through all of that trouble of getting up on a Sunday morning, putting those clothes on, and fixing your hair. And for those of you who don't have as much hair like I don't uh, anymore, Hallelujah. Ain't no need in going through all of that and then showing up and not giving them everything that we have. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I could have stayed in the bed. Amen. But I serve a real good God. <laughs> Come on. I want you to help me do the best job that you can of celebrating the best pastor on this side of heaven, amen. Come on, clap for Pastor Dr. Reverend John Cameron, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I, I wanted to say that uh, you share in what you see uh, because you've been an influencer uh, and you've been a positive impact on my life. And so I want to honor you personally for that. God bless you, Pastor. Psalm 107, beginning at verse 1, uh, we celebrate these men of God who are seated behind me. Amen. We honor the Lord for you, man of God. We honor the Lord for you, man of God. We thank God for your presence. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, I shout right there. If it wasn't for the preaching. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I want to preach to you for the next 13 and a half minutes from the subject. I've got to tell it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got to tell it. Reverend Tate, I begin having what I call God moments. Uh, at an early age. These God moments are the moments in time where I called on God with most sincerity and with desperation. One of the first God moments that I had uh, was when my mama was having her first stroke. I'll never forget it. I was 13 years old and I was watching my mother go through physical changes in my face. I remember we got in the car and we were on our way to Baptist Hospital and for whatever reason, my aunt decided that she was going to go State Street. And every light on State Street was red. And I remember placing my hand on my mama's shoulders and I remember saying, God, if you let her live, Lord have mercy. I bless you the rest of my days. And mama's 75 now. That's why... God help me. I got to tell it. God, I, 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 don't have an, I don't have a choice. But when I look over my life and I think things over, there was a time, Lord help me, uh, when I was a principal at Terry High School. Uh, i never forget it. It was a Saturday during the Christmas break. Uh, I get a call that my then eight-month-old baby uh, that, that, that they were taking her to the hospital. Uh, after getting that call, you got to understand uh, that, that people go to the hospital, and my attitude was, Lord, be with her. She's going to be all right. I get a call later on that night after they'd been at the hospital, said, Tony, you got to come to the hospital. I get to the hospital. We learned that my baby had a tumor on the inside of her that had overtaken her over the size of a grapefruit. She, she was diagnosed with granulosa cell tumor, and they said that if we don't begin immediately giving her treatment, she will not live past six months. Right. 
Uh, the, uh, I, I still remember the feeling that I had, the, the emptiness of a daddy who couldn't do nothing. God, I, I wish I had some real daddies. God, daddies who ain't got to be told to pay nothing. Daddies who, da daddies who, who, who realize that, that, that God put me here to daddy. And any daddy who ain't been able to, whether you hadn't been able to get something for Christmas, a daddy who hadn't been able to show up for a program, come on, daddies, talk to me. Or a daddy who hadn't been able to be there because of the distance, but there's an emptiness in a daddy when he can't do. I'm talking about a daddy now, ain't he? There's, there's an emptiness in a daddy when he can't get to his children. And I remember getting in my vehicle. Uh, uh, she had had emergency surgery that following Monday. On that Thursday, we got the results back from the uh, biopsy, and they, they called us to the hospital, and that's when they told us that she had cancer. I remember riding uh, on Interstate 55 saying, Lord, I don't know what to say to you. God, I, I wish I had a few real people in here. We know you saved. We know you sanctified. We know you got the Holy Ghost. But every now and then, you got to say, Lord, help my unbelief. I ain't never seen this before. I ain't never dealt with this before. I know, I know what they said about you in the Bible. I know what Reverend Cameron preached about. But, Lord, it's me standing in the need. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I got to tell it. I got to tell you uh, uh, that once we had gone to take her to get the port put on the inside of her and we had all shown up to the hospital at the uh, Blair E. Batson's Children's Clinic. And when we got there, my whole family, it's about 30 of us waiting and, and an Indian man comes in and he looks at us and he says, well, I want you to know uh, uh, that what we saw, we don't see no more. God, I, he says, and when he said it, watch this, here it is, uh, uh, an Indian man. Did you hear me what I said? An Indian, East Indian. They, they are Hindus. God, I'm preaching to somebody real quick. He looked and when he gave us the news, didn't nobody say nothing. Uh, Reverend Cameron, when he told us, you would have thought that we would all, we would all have broken out in jubilation. Uh, uh, he says to us, he says, we don't see what we saw. And the cancer that was there, we were able to contain it. God help me. And he looked at us because nobody was saying anything. And he looked at us, this Indian man, he says, praise the Lord, right? <laughs> Baby, if anybody ought to be blessing the name of the Lord. It ought to be some folk that know about his goodness. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, uh, I serve a real good God. Uh, and that's why I bless him like I do. Uh, be seated. Uh, be seated. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad I'm not alone. Uh, the writer of Psalm 107 uh, verses 1 through 2 apparently shares my sentiment uh, because he makes a clarion call, uh, a common call. He says, oh, give thanks. Uh, oh, Lord, help me. Uh, uh, he says, oh, give thanks, but it's a little ambiguous. Uh, uh, it's a little ambiguous, rather, uh, because he does not clarify who he's speaking to. He just says, oh, give thanks. God, I'm uh, but rather the writer persists by giving reason for his moment of thanksgiving. He gives a reason, he says, uh, for he is good. Uh, I want to clarify, I'm telling you to uh, uh, give thanks uh, because he's good. Uh, I ain't live your life, bro, Ellis, so I can't tell you why to bless him. God, I, I ain't been through what you've been through, so I can't tell you why you ought to give him glory. Oh, but I can talk to you about my testimony. Look, look at somebody next to you and say, I got a reason to praise him. For he is good. And I, the next part I really like because it says that his mercy whoo, endureth forever. God, this is when I got to talk to folk like me. God, help me. 
uh, folk who need God's mercy. Uh, folk who don't always say the right stuff. Folk who don't always do the right thing. That's why I'm glad that he gives mercy. What do you mean, Yabba? I'm glad you asked. Uh, uh, he says, oh, give thanks for he is good and he keeps it broad. Uh, he, he doesn't try to nail anything down. He doesn't give you why. He simply says, for he is good. God, I, I, in other words, he says, I ain't got time to tell it. And you can't tell it like I can. What the Lord has done for me. And because you can't tell it, I simply want to declare that, baby, you ought to give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endures how long? Sometimes. When he get tired of you. When you done lied about going to church, y'all ain't saying nothing. God, when you, when, when, when you got to forgive somebody. But it doesn't stop there. I'm glad that he declares that his mercy endures forever. Whose mercy? His mercy. Oh, God, y'all will give up on folk. Sucks. Because uh, long-suffering ain't your fruit. Uh, you'll give up on somebody. Because by now, you ought to have that together. By now, you ought to know better. But by now, you ought to be able to love better. By now, you ought to be used to your loose, loosey cousin. And you ought to pray for her instead of talking about, y'all, I wish I had a church. But I, it says his mercy, not your mercy. Because uh, you'll get tired of me. But I, I'm, I, I'm preaching real good. Uh, uh, you don't live with me, so you, you don't know that she get tired of me. God, I wish I had a few people in here that would just wink, real, just, just wink. Don't want nobody know it's you. I catch a wink. Just, just wink at me. I know. I know I'm in the house with like folk. Folk that ain't always going to do it right. Folk, that every morning you gotta, you need to wake up and say, Lord, I bless you for new mercies. Whatever I got wrong yesterday, God, I glorify you for new mercy. That's why I'm glad about a man named Jesus who is full. Says that his, his mercy endures forever. In other words, there is no limitation to his mercy. There is no expiration to its effectiveness. I need God's mercy. I need him to let me make it sometime. I need him to let me off the hook every now and then. Anybody in here ever need a pass? All right. I, bear with me. I got six more minutes and I'm out of here. Here's what I like. I like, oh God, I, I, I like uh, that in verse 2 that something odd happened. Verse 2, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is, this is interesting because he uses New Testament language for Old Testament foreshadowing. Uh, because there is no redemption in the Old Testament. And I'm, God help me. Uh, in the Old Testament, there is only atonement. Where there is a covering of sin, but there is no remission. God, I wish... God, in other words, uh, 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 God has already dealt with what many of us are dealing with. Uh, you know the thing, the thing you want to hide, but it's the thing God want to use. You know the part of you that you don't want nobody to know about because it's going to dampen the image of you that you want people to understand about you. Oh, man, he, he, he says uh, uh, the redeemed. Not, not the covered up, not the hidden, but the redeemed. In verse 2, uh, he begins to use this New Testament language, uh, uh, and it says, uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The word redeemed in the scripture means to be bought back. I'm, 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 I'm about done. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in the scripture, the word redeemed means to be purchased back. God, I wish, uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm worth something. I'm, 
Uh, you, you might not like me. You may not honor me. You may not appreciate me. You may not like who you may not like who I like. You may not like who I love. Uh, but there was a price on my head. Shucks, I'm, I'm preaching better than you shouting right now. Uh, 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 there, there is something valuable in me. Look at somebody saying, I don't need your approval. See, Israel, Israel understood what it meant to be brought out of something. Israel had been brought out of the wilderness. They had been brought into Canaan. Israel understands because Israel has been brought out of Egypt and into the promised land. That's why I'm glad that God saw fit to create a man with purchasing power. Yes, Lord. I'm glad that he saw fit to create a man who had the appropriate currency. I'm glad today that he created a man who had the proper credit. And I'm glad today uh, that he looked down through 42 generations, uh, found a little girl, uh, and her name was Mary. Uh, and he said, Mary, uh, you getting ready uh, to carry the salvation of the entire world. Uh, and I'm glad today uh, that God created uh, himself all over again. Uh, for the Bible says uh, that the word became flesh uh, and that it dwelt among us. Uh, you ought to look at somebody uh, and say, neighbor, uh, he's been good to me. Uh, that's why uh, I got to tell it. Uh, because on the inside of this virgin woman, uh, there begin to grow uh, uh, a man named Jesus. Uh, here's what I like about it. Uh, he came uh, in order to bring redemption. Uh, he came uh, with the appropriate currency uh, to purchase you back up uh, uh, because the sin that was on your life uh, had run the tab up. Uh, but I'm glad that God got a line of credit uh, on my life. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, I got to tell it. I got to tell it uh, because he's been good to me. Yeah. Let the redeemed, uh, let the redeemed, uh, let the redeemed, uh, let those have been bought back. Uh, you got to say something. I dare you to open up your mouth. If he brought you out, made a way, delivered you, saved your children, healed your mama, Open up your mouth and say, yeah. So the next time that the enemy wants to come in like a flood, you got to look at him uh, and say, God has been real good to me. Uh, so I'm going to push. Uh, I'm going to pray. Uh, I'm going to praise. Uh, and I'm going to celebrate uh, until it does something different for me. Give your neighbor air high five and say, he's getting ready. I'm done. Probably about two minutes over 13.5. But here's what I've learned. That when it been real good, yeah. sucks. Ain't nobody got to tell you twice. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because you get like the old folk were. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul begins to cry out, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The word hallelujah 
It is a call to give God the highest praise. So when the man of God would stand up, he would say hallelujah. And the people would begin to give God a praise. Can we try it for 30 seconds? Hallelujah! Did not our hearts burn as the God man spoke to us here by the wayside? I believe he has to tell it. What a mighty God we serve. We thank God for the message and we certainly thank God for his message. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. What a day. What a day. You don't preach like a former mayor. <laughs> he fooled Jackson, didn't he? And to God be the glory again. And we appreciate you. And I tell you, anytime you want to slip away over there, you come on back and preach again. Uh, have you been here before? Yes, have you preached here before? Yes, All right. Well, he's back again. <laughs> and we certainly like to have you back again. Amen. God bless you. How did you like to say something? I know when to obey. Amen. We've enjoyed service. We thank you all for having us. Thank you for having Relevant Empowerment Church. Man of God, wonderful word. Thank you for having us, Pastor. Miss Jan Ellis, thank you so very much. God bless you all. As the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. To Pastor Cameron, associate ministers, church family, visitors, and friends, first and foremost, we would like to thank the almighty God for blessing our anniversary today. <laughs> to our guest speaker, Reverend Yarbrough, thank you for accepting to come and preach to us today. And I'm glad you had to tell it. And I'm glad God gave you the message to uplift our souls. Thank you. <laughs> to our guest soloist, Ms. Barbara Harper, Thank you for blessing our hearts this morning through song with those God-given vocal talents and reminding us to thank God for his grace and his mercy. Thank you very much. And to Mr. King, thank you for your contribution as you led our program and guided it in a most proficient way. Thank you. Our musicians, our guest musicians, will you please stand? We have a huge appreciation and thank, thankfulness to you as our guest musicians today. Mr. Rufus Matt, would you raise your hand? He is our guest percussionist. Mr. Nate Henson, our bass guitarist. Thank you, gentlemen. Woo! Thank you for the accompaniment today. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. The preceding verse 
is a springboard to express our appreciation and our gratitude to our Minister of Music, Mr. Dow Taylor. <laughs> Mr. Taylor facilitates, coordinates, and rehearses all the choirs of Greater Mount Calvary. He engages the congregation in a variety of quality music experiences. Also, special thank you, Mr. Taylor, for your smooth transition in coordinating our worship services during the heat of COVID. We never missed a beat. For those who were unable to attend in-person service, they were able and still are able to view our services via Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much. Also, thanks to our musicians, Mr. Johnny Hubbard, our skill for bass player in his absence, and our amazing young drummer, Mr. Jaden Hubbard. <laughs> Yours truly is the pianist, and now I turn to the gospel choir. <laughs> Thank you for your dedication and your consistency and glorifying God through song Sunday after Sunday. Our director is Mrs. Jan Taylor Ellis. Our, our assistant director is Dr. Gwendolyn Dooley. And our choir president is Miss Terry Hill. Thank you, ladies, for your contribution. While I'm on the subject of choirs, I would like to thank our youth choir for providing music every third Sunday, and our male choir for providing music on fifth Sundays. And finally, I would like to thank Pastor Cameron. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for spiritually supporting us. We see, we hear your prayers, we feel your prayers, we hear your amens every Sunday, and we see the delight and joy on your face as we worship through music. Thank you. May, <clears throat> may God continue to abundantly bless you and your family. So thank you all, and until we meet again, God bless you. Amen. Once again, this has been a spirit-filled, blessed day. And I know that we'll live on in our memories. Let us stand. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the sweet communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each of our hearts until we meet again. Oh.